So in this video, I wanna talk about what impact the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin Supreme Court decision will have on other Second Amendment cases and issues. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you agree with what the Supreme Court decided in Bruin, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also wanna give a shout out to one of the main supporters of this channel, which is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you take a look into USCCA and I'll leave a link to them down in the detail section. So like I said in the intro, in this video, I wanna talk about what impact the recent Supreme Court decision in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin will have on other Second Amendment cases and issues like magazine bans, bans on so-called assault weapons, the California handgun roster, and a lot more. Many of you have been asking about what ripple effects this decision will have, so I wanted to answer all these questions and kind of give you guys an idea of what's gonna happen from here. Now, for those of you not aware, New York State Rifle and Pistol Association was a challenge to the state of New York's concealed carry permit requirements. The state requires a person to provide proper cause to be issued a permit to carry concealed. The issue was that the state does not consider self-defense a proper cause, and therefore on that justification alone, people had their permits denied. So yesterday, the court issued a 6-3 opinion authored by Justice Thomas, and the decision completely changes the Second Amendment landscape and opens the door for so many more new cases and significantly helps cases already going on right now. So this was something we were really anticipating. This is something we are all really excited for. We got the decision that we wanted and now the floodgates are open and a lot of you guys are asking me what happens now. The first main takeaway from the Thomas decision is that the Supreme Court struck down New York's May issue licensing scheme. In doing so, the Supreme Court found that six states, including the District of Columbia, who use May issue licensing schemes are violating the Second Amendment. Thomas found that New York's proper cause requirement violates the 14th Amendment and that it prevents law-abiding citizens with ordinary self-defense needs from exercising their right to keep and bear arms. Thomas determined in the decision that none of the historical limitations on the right to bear arms approach New York's proper cause requirement because none operate to prevent law-abiding citizens with ordinary self-defense needs from carrying arms in public for that purpose. In this decision, the Supreme Court struck down discretionary permitting systems like may issue licensing schemes that are used in areas like the state of New York and California as well. Because of this decision, the baseline standard for concealed carry in the U.S. now will be shall issue. Shall issue means an agency must issue a permit to a person if that person meets all the objective requirements that are set out. Those requirements could include things like background checks, fingerprinting, fees, etc. But what is now removed is the discretionary element and ability of agencies to determine who they're going to issue permits to and who they won't. So for those who are asking, that is the immediate impact of this decision. The decision eliminates may issue licensing in the US. Now I know some have been asking if you are in one of these may issue states right now, can you just carry right now if you want? The answer to that is no. The decision does not completely eliminate permitting schemes. Instead, it says that if you apply for a permit and meet the objective standards, the state must issue a permit. The decision will trickle down to lower courts, but we have already seen some law enforcement officers and, and agencies saying that they're moving to change their policies in accordance with this decision. Also, we have already seen responses from states like New York and California saying they're going to change their policies to try to adhere to this decision, but also they're claiming that they will try to fight against the decision however they can. And so they might try some weird things. So that's also something you need to take into consideration. And we need to wait to see what exactly these states will do in response. But this opinion did not stop just at concealed carry licensing. It went even further and established text, history, and tradition as the entire constitutional analysis when it comes to the Second Amendment. Thomas's opinion expressly rejected tiered-based scrutiny that lower courts like the Second Circuit and the Ninth Circuit rely upon in various state violations. This aspect of the decision will have the broadest impact and likely the most long-term impact because it wipes out thousands of Second Amendment cases and issues that have been decided incorrectly in the past and now sets a new standard that will be very hard for the government to beat. I actually saw one legal scholar explain it really effectively in a really basic way. He said that governments have been playing the Second Amendment game on easy mode to this point, and now they're gonna have to play on hard mode because the test that applies to their violations is now the true test, and it's a constitutional test. In the opinion Thomas stated, today we decline to adopt that two-part approach. In keeping with Heller, we hold that when the Second Amendment's plain text covers an individual's conduct, the Constitution presumptively protects that conduct. To justify its regulation, the government may not simply posit that the regulation promotes 
an important interest. Rather, the government must demonstrate that the regulation is consistent with the nation's historical tradition of firearms regulations. Only if a firearms regulation is consistent with the nation's historical tradition may a court conclude that the individual's conduct falls outside the Second Amendment's unqualified command. That unqualified command, if you're not aware, is shall not be infringed. He went on to state that despite the popularity of this two-step approach, it is one step too many. Step one of the predominant framework is broadly consistent with Heller, which demonstrates a test rooted in the Second Amendment's text as informed by history. But Heller and McDonald do not support applying means and scrutiny in the Second Amendment context. So now that the Supreme Court has established text as informed by history as the entire analysis, the legal floodgates are completely open. For example, gun control laws like those in the state of California, the California handgun roster, have been upheld using the two-step approach and specifically has been upheld using intermediate scrutiny. Well, the Supreme Court just said, well, that's incorrect. And because of that, cases like Rena v. Bonta that are currently going on, which raise a challenge to the handgun roster again here in California, will get a new life and we will see the relitigation of the handgun roster issue using the new Supreme Court test. Also, the Ninth Circuit's ruling in Young and Pena, which found under the Second Amendment, you have no right to carry a firearm outside your home for self-defense, will be challenged using this new decision. This decision expressly stated under the Second Amendment, you have a right to self-defense outside of the home. Young v. Hawaii is currently on a hold right now at the Supreme Court level, so it could be taken up and decided in light of Bruin by the Supreme Court, or the Supreme Court may decide that they don't want to decide it themselves and they can kick it back down, remand it back down, and tell the lower courts to rule in accordance with their new decision in Bruin. So that's something that could also happen. You also have the Duncan v. Bonta California magazine ban case and the ANJ RPC New Jersey magazine ban case, and also the Bianchi v. Frosch ban on so-called assault weapons. All of those are up at the Supreme Court level right now and were on hold until the uh, Supreme Court issued their decision in Bruin. And all those cases were decided in the past with the rejected two-step approach. Those decisions are now compromised and will need to be reheard in light of this new decision. Again, the Supreme Court may take those cases up on their own or remand them back down to the lower courts in light of their Bruin decision. So there's a lot of things that can happen, but a lot of these cases that were prior decided using the two-step approach, a lot of these cases were decided using the two-step approach and all of that goes away. Beyond those, you also have active cases like Miller and Rupp, which deal with California's assault weapon ban and the Rody uh, case, which deals with California's ammunition restrictions. All those cases are also going to be impacted by this decision. What you will likely see happen from here on out is 28 J letters will be submitted to various Ninth Circuit judges in those cases. The letter will state that the Supreme Court recently issued a ruling in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin, and that in the decision, the court stated text as informed by history is the appropriate analysis, and that the Ninth Circuit's two-step approach was expressly rejected. We already saw multiple 28J letters go out yesterday, and there will be so many more that are uh, filed and issued now. So that's another thing to keep on your radar. You're gonna see all these letters fly out to these various courts in all these cases, and that's gonna just completely change the operation of those cases from here on out. And beyond the active cases, there's also going to be a lot of new cases that you will see pop up. California and New York have hundreds of firearms restrictions and new challenges will pop up. Think of new challenges to the 10 day waiting period in California. Think of even things like suppressor bans, SBR restrictions, and just so many more other issues and cases will pop up because of this new analysis that was set up in Bruin. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Al Gore's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I wanna thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will maintain armed scholars.